targeted. So we got you covered with a full explanation. But if you want to watch, is Star Wars done for? Is Star Wars is Star Wars done for? BBC gang in it, bitch. <laughs> BBC gang in it, bitch. Oh God, I don't do that. WC. No, nobody want that white. <laughs> pink. <laughs> no, nobody want that. We BBC what gang. What the? No. All right, more, more. The more. more. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. What's up? Pivot. Wait, wait, wait. Pivot. The goat is back. Hey, hey, welcome back, Screen Crush. The goat is back! I'm feeling so many conflicting emotions right now. I'm happy and angry! The goat is back! Marvel just announced that my all-time favorite Marvel character, Doctor Doom, will be replacing Kang as the villain. I ain't gonna lie! I didn't know... I didn't know... I didn't know Doctor Doom was really just... For real, for everybody. I'm not saying Doctor Doom was trash or anything. I'm just like, I didn't realize this many... So many people love that man. Where did the love for Doctor Doom come from? Let me know, bro. Let me know. Villain of Secret Wars, and that he's going to be played by Robert Downey Jr. I, I can't, I can't believe you. <laughs> Dark does a spit take. I know, right? So we're going to break down all of the SDCC footage and announcements, the Fantastic Four footage, and then me and Colton Ogburn are going to explain the return of Robert Downey Jr. and the Russo brothers and what that means for Avengers and the future of the MCU. W so the panel began with Feige and friends bringing out the cast of Captain America Brave New World. Feige called it a return to the grounded aspects of Winter Soldier, which is awesome. Mm. Captain America's stories are vital to the MCU because they mm. show us the street level human elements of the franchise. Harris and Ford playing the president also seems like a throwback to 90s political thrillers of his like Air Force One, Patriot Games, or Clear and Present Danger. Now Harrison Ford was also there and he said that he took on the role because he saw all these other actors in the MCU and he wanted to have some of that fun too. They also revealed that Giancarlo Esposito is not playing GW Bridge as some leakers suggested. He is playing Sidewinder, the head of the Serpent Society. What the f*** is this? <laughs> Why he look like a uh, iguana? What the hell? Society. Now just say right now. So in the He just said Serpent and Society. Never mind. Comics, the Serpent Society is a group of snake themed Captain America villains. In fact, Marvel originally Why do they have a why do they have snake you know what? Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Nah, Captain America gotta have the most weakest weakest villains, bro. He got to, bro. He got to have the most weakest villains, bro. Originally teased us and said the title of Captain America Civil War was the Serpent Society. Now, one of the most notable things about this group is one of their members was the villain turned hero Diamondback, who became Diamondback. Steve Rogers' love interest hey, for years in the comics. Oh. But the big reveal of the panel was finally showing Harrison Ford hawking out, both on stage and in the footage. There was what the Ross at the presidential podium turning into the Red Hawk at a press the conference. And the Red Hawk, by the way, does have a face that looks like Harrison Ford's. And in the footage, they also confirmed a long-held rumor that the Celestial from the Eternals is going to be key in making the mineral oh. out of and Feige to say, Just, just when I think my, my dream of married life can't get any more complete, I hear Harrison Ford say Adamantium. Guys, they showed a trailer for the Thunderbolts, asterisk. So the Thunderbolts are another team that I'm just jazzed for. Think of them like Marvel Suicide Squad. They showed some footage that revealed all the team members, w including Lewis Pullman as Bob, AKA the Sentry. Now they're here right now. So the what? Sentry is a character created by Paul Jenkins, who is both the strongest and most powerful hero in the Marvel universe, but he's also the most powerful villain because he has a split personality in the comic. Oh, wait, hold on. Cause I know about this. Damn. In the Marvel Universe, but he's also the most powerful villain because he has a. Nah, he looked like an ignorant ass man. He looked like an ignorant ass man. I'm not even going to lie to you. Wait, he looked kind of clean, bro. Hold on. Hold on. He looking kind of clean, boy. He looking kind of clean with that. Wait, I kind of need this. I kind of need this. Is he a smurf? What the f***? Split personality. In the comics, he even had Doctor Strange cast a forgetting spell on him and the rest of the world as a way to keep his alter ego villain. Oh, hell no. It is a truly great comic. But this movie is going to be focused on bringing together all of these misfits and former villains. Like Bucky, Red Guardian. Oh, and by the way, David Harper appeared at the panel in full costume. Ghost, who also has Debbie. a new costume, US agent, and Taskmaster. But I don't remember. Who, who the hell was that? Is this Ghost? I do not remember her. 
I do not remember this Together, all of these misfits and former villains, like Bucky, Red Guardian. Oh, and by the way, David Harbour appeared at the panel in full costume. Ghost, who also I'm has a new costume, U.S. agent, and Taskmaster. But as Sebastian Stan said at the panel, Florence Pugh's Yelena Belova is the standout of the story, which is awesome because I love that character. Beautiful. That's all I'm going to say. Beautiful. Also described playing Bucky so many times as having nine lives, which is an interesting phrase because originally Sebastian Stan only signed a nine picture deal with Marvel. Maybe he's finally going to be killed off, but for real this time. The footage also revealed that Valentina Allegra de Fontaine has bought Avengers Tower. Now we can presume that she's the person who gathers the Thunderbolts together. So maybe this means that the team is going to be headquartered in that building. I mean, we had so many theories about this building that the Kingpin bought it, the Kang bought it, the Fantastic Four. So this reveal is kind of a head scratcher. But it definitely seems like Marvel is oh, finally shit. paying off a lot of these teases as we finally run up toward the end of the multiverse saga. But they did not explain why the new title has an asterisk. Now, in the Thunderbolts comics, the first issue revealed that the Thunderbolts were actually villains, the masters of evil in disguise. It was a huge twist and maybe oh. we'll get something similar with the reveal that maybe baron zemo is actually secretly running the team and then we met the cast of wait that'd be kind of fire wait hold on y'all might need to do that y'all might need to do that wait but are they already evil though so they just be even more evil i don't know the Fantastic Four. Now, Feige confirmed that everybody on stage would appear in the new Avengers movies, including the FF. So then they showed this short teaser, which I've seen, so we can break it down for you. The title of the movie is Fantastic Four First Steps, because it takes place in a retro future set in the 1960s on an alternate Earth when the human race was exploring space for the first time. This looks amazing. It's going to be very much inspired by the early Jack Kirby and Stan Lee comics, and I am so excited for that. So this is when the multiverse saga really works, when it's telling us stories in ways that are unencumbered by the rest of the MCU's continuity. The movie is directed by Matt Shackman, who helmed WandaVision, and the footage opens with this retro 1960s Fantastic Four logo before taking us to Pedro Pascal as Reed Richards, teaching this group See, of kids I don't about know the about multiverse. This, man. Then there are a series of I shots know, showing man. Ben and Reed as astronauts with like some fun interplay between them. Then we see a flying car, which they also brought out on the stage in Hall H. We see this shot Bro, of the that's, a, that's of crazy. like they just returned from their space flight and have their powers. Now, the cast did confirm that they are not going to be retelling the origin story. They're doing something new and they're doing it oh. in their own way. But I do think we'll see their origin summarized in a film just like this one. Then we see the outline of the thing on the dating game, but he stays in shadow because they filmed this entire teaser in like three days. They didn't have time to complete the VFX on him. I also like how this reel is presented as like a government promotional reel, playing oh, up the team as hero astronauts and introducing us to them one at a time. I, I also it. love the look of the rocket. So this looks like how artists in the 1960s would have imagined space travel. It's very Art Deco, like a ship from Flash Gordon. And then, after the title reveal, we get our very first look at this mm, Kirby-accurate Galactus looking at a skyscraper oh! window. So this is actually an early animatic that they developed during their Viz dev process, which is why they had it ready Wait, to go, that's even tough! they filming a few days ago. Remember, the last time we saw Galactus on screen, he was a cloud. <laughs> That's so this tough. was really The Fantastic Four is my second all-time favorite Marvel comic, and I have I'm a dreamed of a movie that I'm a actually portrays them, especially a movie that includes Doctor Doom. And that brings us to the big news. The Russo brothers, directors of Infinity War and Endgame, are returning to direct Avengers 5 and 6, with Stephen McFeely, who co-wrote those films and the Cap trilogy, also returning to write the script. Now, Avengers 5 at one point was going to be written by Jeff Loveness and directed by Dustin Daniel Cretton, who's now moved on to other Marvel projects. Back oh. then, it was called the Kang Dynasty. Oh yeah, what happened there? Well, Marvel originally put all their chips on Jonathan Majors playing the time-traveling villain Kang, but then Quantum Mania underperformed yeah. and Jonathan Majors was arrested yeah. and convicted of assault so Marvel fired him yeah. so now they need to fire up their base and win fans back so Avengers 5 is now yeah, titled they kind of hold they kind of he kind of hold him on that when I know to the MCU to play Doctor Doom I have so many questions I barely slept last night is he playing a variant of Tony Stark is he also from the same reality as the Fantastic 4 I'm torn on this because I know that Robert Downey Jr will be a great Doctor Doom but does this mean that Marvel has run out of ideas but that's just what I think Colton Ong Burn, what do you think about this? Did you sleep last night? Not much. Who the fuck is this? Um, yeah. I think it's I think it's brilliant. I think it's perfect. I don't think there is a single a on. announcement that they could have made that would have triggered more excitement 
more enthusiasm. I can't think of a single actor they could have brought out on that stage to play Dr. Doom that would have got me this excited. Uh, look, I, I also love the character of Dr. Doom, but perhaps not quite as much as Ryan. I I, I won't try to step on, you know, I his, mean, to be fair, I don't think I don't think anybody character. else could play but I love Doom. that nigga. Anyway. I, I love the prospects of him being, you know, the next Thanos. And I think not just from a standpoint of I don't yes, think Robert Downey Jr. is a phenomenal actor. And in a world where perhaps he didn't play Tony Stark and Iron Man, uh, I could see him totally being in the running for a, a Victor Von Doom type character. But he, here's the reason I think it's perfect. This is the multiverse saga. And the mm. theme of the multiverse saga is choice and how Damn. decisions that you make can alter the very fabric of time and reality and change everything. Yeah, and I know we're going to talk, you know, about the logistics here in a second of what this means. But I, I think it is perfect to have the big bad of the multiverse saga be a version of the big hero from the Infinity Saga. Wait, wait, that man kind of that man kind of cooking. Hold on, choice and decisions that are made can change everything that man kind of so cooking with, i ain't gonna I, lie i think doom is going to be a variant of tony stark i, I think that is absolutely absolutely perfect and i i think it serves the story really well okay so i i do want to talk logistics in a second because what you just said about victor von doom being a variant of tony stark absolutely shakes me to my core and i kind of hate it but i don't but i only hate it as somebody who loves the comics and i want to see you know, the thrill for me has always been I get to see the comics on screen, right? I get thematically that is a really good thing. And I don't want you guys to think like I think this is the worst thing ever. It's it's not the worst thing since Greedo shooting first. It is something I'm conflicted about, which, again, I want to tell you everything, all the doubts that I'm having in just a second. But first, Colton, I agree. This is extremely exciting. I mean, I you talk about a shakeup, right? You know, the multiverse saga, what can we say that Deadpool hasn't already said straight to Marvel's face? Uh, it was it was listless. There was too much. The special effects started to look cheap. Everybody mm. was stretched too thin. We didn't have an Avengers team up. They were peeling fans off. I think the hardcore fans, we, we never left. We were, you know, expected a lot out of the multiverse well, I didn't saga, see the movie. I didn't even see the movie. by certain things like Secret Invasion or some other Yeah, that shit was booty took. cheeks. But we were always waiting for them, right? And then they came with us. So... That shit was, I, you're right. There's that nothing shit was they booty would have possibly they, they folded on that as one. much enthusiasm. But <laughs> are you driving way less than you used to? Hey, yo! Do you have a driving record? Are you over 25? Do you not have a DUI? Unless if you was going to give me money. You're right that it is like the thing we talked about earlier about the Fantastic Four, right? If you're going to do the Fantastic Four and you're going to do the multiverse, do it the way they're doing it, right? The whole point of the multiverse saga isn't to be like, Here's John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic. That's fun for a cameo, but it's, hey, what about a world that is like an alternate 19th? Why was he not Mr. Fantastic though? That's my DC question. Already realized with the Joker. So in that way, I think they're finally starting to see the value of the multiverse saga beyond just cameos. But you brought up logistics, right? So logistically, do you think he's going to actually be Victor Von Doom, Monarch of Latveria? L logistically, I I think like. It, and I don't know if logistically. you disagree with me on this, but I think there's zero chance that he's not a Tony variant. Now, to what that means uh, in terms of it, logistically, is he though. going in his universe going to have had the name Tony Stark or has he always been Victor Von Doom? Uh, to make a comparison though. to Deadpool. Uh, spoiler alert for Deadpool and Wolverine. Ah! Spoiler alert for Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ain't nobody trying to hear all that. Ain't nobody trying to hear all that, boy. A thing. So in terms of the name Victor Von Doom, that's a great question. I really don't, don't know. So? I, I'm curious to see where on the timeline this character went off. Because I think with... To I think with this is, though, like... I think it's confusing, at least to me. I'm not too deep into comics, so I don't really know everything. But like, I don't know. Seeing seeing Tony Stark as a whole different character, like doesn't like unless it, unless if because I know there's I think if I remember correctly I know there's a variant of Tony Stark that fused with 
Doctor Doom. At least I think I I think it was I think that's how it went. I'm not a hundred percent sure. But like I don't know, it's just gonna look weird though. I don't know. Cause having the best version of the character is too risky. He has to play the role a little to pull that off, to be honest. What do you mean by that? Like to have him like Because my thing is this, right? My thing is like I don't I don't know who else could play Doctor Doom. That's my question. Like who else could play him? Like real talk. That's what I'm saying. And then it's like if we can if I feel like I feel like they I feel like Marvel couldn't find anybody that fits Doctor Doom better than Robert Downey Jr. So that's why I feel like they have to go through this variant angle because they little legitimately couldn't find anybody that fits their version of what they want to do with Doctor Doom. Like having uh like have marinated into the role instead of throwing it immediately in the oven. But what do you mean by that though? I'm asking like as far as like what? Doctor Doom's character? Like what are you trying to like are you talking about Robert Downey Jr.? Like what do you like what do you what do you mean like what do you mean like like what do you mean by that? Cause I think I I don't like cause I think what they're trying to say is like well, minus spoilers, because I haven't watched Wolverines yet, so I don't know. I, I I'm guessing that, I'm guessing there's a hint there. You're talking about Robert. Oh, you're talking about Robert as the actor playing a new character. Oh, gotcha. See, now that makes more sense. So you're saying that? Well, yeah, obviously that's why they have Doomsday though. That's why Doomsday, Doomsday is going to set up Doctor Doom for Secret Wars. I think that's the whole purpose. My thing is like. I'm asking like what who 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 better would play Doctor Doom other than Robert Downey Jr. That's what I'm that's what I'm asking. Cuz I'm like who who Jensen Ackles? Who is that? I don't even know I said that man. His name right. Who is that? Oh, I seen this nigga. Oh, you talking about uh Soldier Boy? Um I can kinda see it. I'm not mad at this. He did play Soldier Boy. He did play Soldier Boy. I don't know though. This is not a bad pick. But like, hold on. I don't know though. Mm. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. I think he could work. I think he could work, but I don't think I don't think it's going to be enough to get people excited for Doctor Doom though. You know what I mean? I don't think he, I don't think it would, like, I, I, I mean, I get, unless if you're going by, like, just the character being announced by itself, sure, I guess you'll get that, but I think what, I think what the MCU is trying to do here is trying to get as much people to get into the theaters as possible, and teasing Doctor Doom, I feel like is, is good, but I don't think that's enough to, like, really be like, oh, is it worth it? So I think that's why they went with Robert Downey Jr. Because it's like, well, we already have. If it was going to bring Robert Downey Jr. back into Marvel, the MCU anyway, but, like, there would be no other way that they could do it. Like, unless if they was to do a variant of him as Iron Man or as a, probably a whole new character. Because it's not the first This is not the first time Marvel has done this or DC or, like, or any, like, comic book, like, you know, company that has movies like this. Like, it's not the first time they ever have people reprise their role or have a, a character that's already one character in, in the show movie and become a different one. Uh, but I think for, I think, 
I'm not mad at it. Yeah, Iron Man's dead, dead, and they're keep and and I and I heard that they want to keep that. So the only other way that they would ever be able to bring back Robert Downey Jr. is if if he's just a, a different variant. Because I think I think that's kind of what they're gonna do with uh Kang as well. Since you know, obviously, oh boy, you know what I'm saying, Mr. Majors is not, <laughs> you know, he's not gonna be in the MCU anymore. Uh, so I think that's what they wanted to do with him as well. So. I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to. We'll have to see, though. We'll have to see. I. I. I'm not like I said. I'm not. I'm not mad at Robert Downey Jr. Like an alternative universe Iron Man. Yeah, it's a like a like a variance. You know, because they playing it off the multiverse shit. So it's like a different. Like that's the only other way they could do that is like bring a different world Iron Man. Like world like one six one six six or like it. You, you, something like that, like like that. But at the same time, I don't know. I don't know how that would work though, because because I feel like they can. I don't think. I don't think that's they. They should should do that because, like, if you remember Spider Man, right? Spider Man obviously brought the the two different Spider Mans back together, and it's like they're played by two different characters. So I don't know if that will. I don't know if that will throw people off because like. How do you explain that? Because, like, every time we get a different variant of a character, it's played by a different person. So, except for Kang, I guess. Kang's the only one. But even then, it's like, I don't know. I don't know how you, like, I don't, I don't know if people are nitpicky like that. Because it's like, I don't think that's fair to do. Because it's like, literally, Spider-Man, Spider-Man was one. Uh, Mr. Fantastic was another one. Uh, Xavier was it uh, was another one so it's like how do you like i don't know because like you can make a whole separate series outside of marvel of of it what do you mean separate series are you saying like a separate series of like with the same with the same character or i don't know if they want to do that though Cause what do you mean by series? Like like a different a different Iron Man series set in a different world? I don't think. I mean, I don't know if they. I don't know if they want to do that though. Cause I don't think. I don't think people are trying to really like. We're already past the point of trying to like. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they want to do that though. Cause we're already kind of past the point of like trying to do a whole different. Like, like for Batman, for instance, right? Or like, or like Spider Man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're three different like. They're three different like universes, but they're all the same character. It's like I don't know, I don't know if they're trying to make a whole different Iron Man universe because they because how would you tie that back into all your other films? Like you can't do that. Uh, you can't have like a standalone Iron Man film with still with Robert Downey Jr. but just him being in a different universe and then be like, okay, what if this was like that? Because like, then you still have to tie it back in into the continuity of what they're trying to do. But to be honest, if there was an actor who can make it possible, it's him. I mean, I guess. But I don't, at this point, it's like, are we here for Iron Man or are we here for Robert Downey Jr.? Because at that point, it's like, well, we don't even need Iron Man then. Then we should be just fine with, with him being Doctor Doom. Which I, know, I have no problems with him being Doctor Doom. I have no problems with him being Doctor Doom. I'm not a really big Doctor Doom fan, so I don't really care who plays as Doctor Doom, if I'm going to be honest. I think the reason why they only they did this though is just because they really want people to they really want people to watch this movie. So it's like how the hell are they going to be able to tie Robert Downey Jr. into this current world? Cuz I think the problem is is that this Doctor Doom has to be tied with the current world that's going on right now and we know that that wouldn't make any sense to have Doctor Doom from the same world as Tony Stark and they play the same character and they have the same face cuz the only other there's no way you can get like that wouldn't make any sense like continuity wise that literally wouldn't make any sense cuz you can't have Doctor Doom from that world and Tony Stark from that world be the same actor you know what i mean that wouldn't make any sense at all whatsoever so i unless if like i said he has to be like a variant 
he he has to be like a variant of like some other world and then he has to either like replace the the replace the replace the version which which I think that that's what they're going to do. They're going to have Tony's the, the Tony or Robert Downey Jr. replace the Doctor Doom of that world. I think that's what they're going to do. I think they're going to have him replace the Doctor Doom of that world and the Doctor Doom of that world is going to go somewhere else so that way they can cast a different person. So it makes more sense continuity wise. So that way it's like you can still have Robert Downey Jr. He's a different variant, and he can, it still makes sense because it's like he's not playing Tony Stark. Like he's a different. He did, I guess they could just play like I'm just a, I'm just a Iron. I'm a different. I'm a variant of Doctor Doom who was also Iron Man, and I I come from a different world. So we're not. I can still coexist in this shit. You said what if what if like the suit rocks uh on its own and it's a uh, ultimate collab episode of Doctor Doom and Iron Man but Iron Man is dead it, and it's in the suit <laughs> I mean I mean I I guess but that'll also be like <laughs> why we got this dead ass nigga in the in a in a sentient suit why like why would why would Iron Man still need to be like why would Robert still need to be in a suit if it's just going to be sentient it's just a at that point, it's just like this is a dead nigga just in a, in an Iron Man suit. <laughs> like, what are we? <laughs> That'd be. I mean, I get what. Like, I, well, actually, I don't even think that would work because he snapped himself out of existence. Like, I'm like, are you, are you talking about like the Iron Man of of this world, like the six one six Iron Man? Didn't he snap himself out of his ex existence? He doesn't exist at all whatsoever. I don't even think there's an Iron Man suit for him to even be in. He does not exist at all, like, in any planes of reality in that world. So he's just, like, he does not exist at all. Like, his actual, like, physical, like, existence of him in the suit. If I remember correctly. That would be kind of weird, though. <laughs> that would be kind of weird, though, having him just be, like, yeah, he's gone, gone. Like, remember, because he snapped his finger in the end of Endgame to erase his, his, his entire existence from that universe so like he doesn't exist at all whatsoever like he's nowhere it's not like captain it's not like captain america where like you know he's still he's still there but we can have like a different captain america like he gone 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 tony stark there are several times throughout the mcu age of ultron being a good point mm -hmm. uh iron man of course being a good point iron man 3 where Tony Stark could have went a very different direction. He has great Very your heart like, open. I understand. Um, yeah. I, I see a suit of armor around the world. Uh, I think that this character, and Ryan, I, I totally get your concerns about wanting them to just do a proper Victor Von Doom, but I really think that this might be a way to service that character because Doom, and it, it depends on the rendition of the character, but he doesn't see himself necessarily as the villain. You know, I, I think that. And to be fair, I feel like even. Uh, having Robert Downey Jr. be Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom is ninety nine percent in his mask. So does it really matter who plays him, like physically? It's more of a vocal performance. I think that's what that's what the bottom line is. If I'm if I'm if I'm not if I'm if I'm gonna be honest, because Doctor Doom is just a behind a mask, so we don't even see you don't even you don't even get to see his face rarely at all. So like. Maybe they wanted Do Robert Downey Jr. just more for the voice acting part of it and not like the actual physical acting. That's what I now now I'm putting it that that way. I kind of see that's I think that's why they did that. I I think that's why they did that. I could understand like what's the guy you said, uh, the nigga that plays Soldier Boy. I feel like he wouldn't he wouldn't be a bad Doctor Doom, but at the same time, I don't know if they would pick him pick him more if they was gonna show Doctor Doom without a mask. You know what I mean? If they would have showed Doctor Doom without a mask type shit, I think, yeah, it would make more sense to do choose somebody else. But I think they want Robert Downey more for his vocal performance as like those types of characters. If I'm a, if I'm gonna just be honest, if I'm gonna be honest, he not a bad, he not a bad like, you know what I'm saying? Like he not a bad choice though. Like he not a bad choice. This version of Doom is going to be a version of Tony who just went a different path, but still has the same noble intentions of saving 
the world just from a very different perspective. I, I don't think which, this which is a Tony Stark. Well, someone's going to have to be Doom, acting yes. physically. Like that, that is what makes him great. Which is, yeah. which I, I, don't, think, I don't think this is a Tony Stark uh, that never Iron grew Man up, you know, never matured or anything sure. like that. I think it's definitely a Tony I don't Stark think that it's grew up, matured, be voice uh, got his conscience, but just went. Well, my thing is this, though. Like, it, it is, though, because, like, you don't need to see his face for it, for it to be Doctor Doom. So, physically, the actor doesn't matter because it could be a stunt. Most of them are going to be stunt doubles anyway. So, it's like it doesn't matter who's physically acting as Doctor Doom as long as he fits the, you know, measurements of what they want to envision Doctor Doom. But you, but, but you can't, you're not going to be able to put a face to the name. So, it's like, I think voice acting wise, it's going to be more important for Robert Downey Jr. to do it because, like, you don't have, you could put Robert Downey Jr. in. Uh, as Doctor Doom, and you know that's what it is. It's the same thing with like what you McCall the nigga that played uh, Thanos, uh, uh, Brolin. Like with Josh Brolin, like they didn't like he doesn't physically have to. He well, to be fair, that was more CGI, but even still, it still, it still fits the same. No, Rocky Raccoon is a good example, right? Rocky Raccoon is a good example because like you know the nigga that plays Rocky Raccoon, like I think what who's it? Bradley Cooper, right? Bradley Cooper plays Rocky Raccoon. Clearly, you clearly like you know what I'm saying they don't need a physical actor to play Doctor like Ra Rocket Raccoon like they got the voice actor, they got the voice. That's the whole point of the voice acting part. Same thing with Groot. Uh, shit, I'm trying to think of a, a character who primarily uses a mask. I don't know who who primarily uses who primarily wears a mask. Ninety nine percent of their things. I don't even know. I was going to say Deadpool, but no. I think Ryan Reynolds kind of cemented himself as Deadpool. Uh, and I, and he, they do show him without his mask more than they do like with on it for most, like, most of the movie. I think with Doctor Doom, it's just like he's primarily known for the mask. So I'm like, who else would really be that where it, the voice, like the physical actor doesn't matter? I, I can't even think. Low-key, the most balanced, probably Moon Knight. Yeah, well, but to be fair though, like, like I'm saying, like you see Moonlight without your without the mask, like he transforms. He he has a transformation. Doctor Doom don't got a transformation that really matters. You know what I'm saying? Like he don't like you don't have to see Doctor Doom transform. That's what I'm saying. Moon Knight is the most balanced actor. Eh, debatable, debatable. I fuck with Moon Knight, but eh, debatable. Went a different way with it. Has very well, different I, intentions. I think it would be a Tony Stark who was forced to grow up way too early. Because that's really what yeah. defines Doctor Doom. I mean, Doctor Doom's family, just to give you guys a rundown on this. Like, if you if you only ever watch the movies, you're like, Doctor Doom, that guy from Rise of the Silver Surfer and the dude from, you know, who was a hacker in uh, 2015 yeah. uh, Fantastic. So Doctor Doom in the comics, right, has this, he's like Magneto, has an incredibly tragic. I forgot he was in the, bro, I need Silver Surfer, bro. I need Silver Surfer. Nigga, who's playing Silver Surfer, my nigga? I need to know that. Silver Surfer, my nigga, bro. Whoever playing Silver Surfer, I'm glazing for the rest of your life. Backstory. He was a Romani, a Romani traveler in Europe in a yeah, country called Latveria. Brilliant from a young age, but his people were persecuted by the Latveria. government. Latveria. And the fuck is Latveria? Short, his mom sold her soul to the devil, et cetera, et cetera. But even from a young age, you know, there's a great comic book we were just talking about called The Books of Doom. Highly recommend it. From a young age, he realized he was smarter you than everyone else. So he to worked make a hard Dr. to Doom get his family video? out of Oh, there's plenty out there. From hell. He, you know, there's plenty worked, out there. Worked his way up, went to university. There's plenty out I was actually unironically trying to find one. There's plenty out there. We might have to we might have to go in, on a deep dive on that one. I ain't gonna lie. And then had this tragic accident that he blames Reed Richards for. And then after well, variant he comics goes actually. actually. We can actually watch. We actually spend a variant him. comics. His ego if niggas don't know really like kind of Doctor Doom like that. Because I don't. He I don't even really know Doctor Doom like that. Like that. He thinks he's so important and special he can never truly touch the world. You know, takes over Latveria. All I know about Doctor Doom is that that nigga gets very broken in Secret Wars, which I'm excited to see. And he's beating up literal gods. So, like, he apparently he's that nigga. So, but that's all I know. Yeah, runs it as a dictatorship. But I, like just, I really just want a Hulk movie, bro. And then, of course, he I'm sorry. Fantastic Four and is always I'm always sorry. Richards. I really need a Hulk movie because I'm getting tired of y'all. Everybody in their mind. How the fuck does Dr. Doom get two movies before Hulk get a movie? And Hulk been in the MCU way longer than this nigga has been, bro.
Like, come on, man. We got Red Hulk before a Hulk movie. She Hulk whole She Hulk got a whole TV series before the actual real Hulk. Spider Man that Spider Man they're gonna have gonna have five movies by the time we get anything Hulk related. Come on, bro. So these are certain Tidy's things that bullshit. for me are inherent in Doctor the Doctor Doom that I know from the comics, right? And of course, he starts off in the comics as like a mustache twirling back, a curse you Richards and that kind of stuff. And over the years, they added layers and nuance. I'm He's also somebody who is very much like the Tony Stark in the MCU. Was so he is ass. a person who is hyper focused. I'm gonna be honest, because this is like how we was talking about yesterday. I don't, I don't think it was that bad. I'm not saying people were OD about it. The show definitely had its bad points. I'm not going to, you know what I'm saying? But I really feel like it wasn't that, I don't think it was that bad because we still got a lot of information. I, I get it though. It's a TV show though. I don't think it was great. Like, long, long get twisted. I don't think it was great. I am still kind of upset that we did get She-Hulk before a Hulk movie. But I don't think it was that bad. I don't think it was. I think she played the character well, in my opinion. I think she played the character well. And all the cameos that we got in that show, they were actually pretty fire. To me, at least. I, I guess I guess maybe, I guess Megan Thee Stallion is probably the only one people didn't like. Which I'm like, eh, it's Megan Thee Stallion. It, it, whatever, bro. Like, you know, damn, she, you know what I mean, type shit. I don't think it was that bad, though. I love She-Hulk. You're going to be, She-Hulk was slightly irrelevant. Okay, I don't know about that. She-Hulk is fire. She-Hulk is, is fire. Let's not do that. You love her in general? She-Hulk and, uh, what you gonna call the other one? Uh, what's the other girl? The other Hulk? I forgot her name. The red one? Both of them are fire. And hell, high key, they're like top, top Top 15 strongest hulks, which I don't, I mean, to be fair, there's not that many, but there's a, there's a lot. They're, they're like, they're top 15, bro. They're top 15. And She-Hulk is fire as hell. She-Hulk is t fire as hell. Nah, she really is. She really is. This is a combo you ain't ready to have. Ready, ready for. Uh, I mean, it is. I, I can, un I could arguably say that she's unironically top 15. Which is not really that crazy of a statement, if we're gonna be honest. I don't see what's wrong with that. She's top fifteen. Both both She Hulk and the other girl, I forgot her name, the Red Hulk, the red version of She Hulk are like top fifteen. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's like tw there's like twenty there's like twenty five different versions of Hulk. So like You know what I'm saying? So like fifteen is not that bad. Remember the white and black widow. You're talking about. What does that have to do with anything? What do you what do you what is white and what is white and black widow got to do? She Hulk. She Hulk as a show felt like a shitty res, uh, res, respin of a movie of the of that movie of of black widow. You talking about the Black Widow movie? You saying She-Hulk is just basically that? Nah, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I think I think She-Hulk, if we're going to compare She-Hulk to Black Widow the movie, She-Hulk was way worse than that because there wasn't there wasn't that much action in She-Hulk. There was a lot of action in the Black Widow movie, especially towards the end. Which I still don't get the hate for the Black Widow movie. There wasn't that there wasn't that much action though. I'll give you that. There wasn't that much action in She-Hulk. But to be fair, if I'm gonna be honest, she's not really like action driven though. She's a lawyer. They were going through the lawyer as like the lawyer perspective of her thing, of her character, which I'm not really mad at. Like, because she is a lawyer first. She's literally a lawyer first, Hulk second. She didn't want to be a Hulk. She wanna she didn't want to Hulk out. Now, I get it. I understand niggas got mad because, you know, she was fucking twerking with Megan Thee Stallion shit. I get it. I, people don't like that shit. That's the same reason why people got mad at uh, Mandalorian when fucking Jack, Plack, Jack, Jack Black and Lizzo was in it. And they're like, bro, why is Jack Black here? But, like, if we take the celebrity status out of the shit, I don't think it was like, like, come on, bro. Like, it wasn't that bad. 
It wasn't that bad, bro. That's kind of like Hulk's whole personality, though. It's weird as fuck. She-Hulk being a lawyer? The show was supposed to be centered around her just being a lawyer. Hulk, Bruce Banner's a whole scientist. Like, I wouldn't even be mad. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that, like, whoa. Why is he trying to be better than the original Hulk minus things that Hulk actually doing? When was he trying to be better than the original Hulk? Did we watch the same show? The whole show was her trying to, the whole show was her having, dealing with anxiety with, with, with men, being a lawyer, and she literally went to rehab. That was literally the whole show. That had nothing to do with her being better than Hulk. That's literally the whole, the literally the show. That's not the no, no. That's how she barely mentioned Hulk was barely mentioned, like the first two episodes in the last episode where we see fucking, uh, Bruce Banner in the fucking spaceship. And it was and she tried to call Hulk and be like, I can't talk right now, and it's him uh, going traveling in space. That was it. That had nothing to do with that. She was being she was being there uh with the original Hulk saying that women doing shit uh better than men. What? What does that gotta what does that gotta do with anything? <laughs> what? What are we talking about? She literally was on it. She was literally just trying to be a a uh, uh, uh trying to be a great lawyer. That I don't what it what it we don't lost a plot. What are we talk about, bro? He's doing things, hyper brilliant, teaches himself to be the second greatest sorcerer it, in the world. He's second message. in line for it sorcerer supreme, which poorly. is why in this model I have here, he's what message? Up. God, I love Doctor Doom so much. I've so hey, much I got you that. I, you did, and I've so I know they had like I know they had like the whole women empowerment shit, which you know, teach their own. I mean, I don't really care. But I don't think that was the whole entirety of the show. The show still has some good aspects to it, like like her like her dealing with her anxiety and all that shit. I feel like that was like kind of more at the focal point if anything. But I get that, you know, the women shit, I guess, you know, niggas don't like that shit. I understand, bro. I'm not even going to hate on niggas that do that, but but I don't think that was like I don't think that was the whole show. That being the whole show is crazy. No, nah, I don't I don't I don't agree with that. So much <laughs> Doctor Doom stuff right here. In fact, this one's my favorite. Um this one, the mask comes oh, off. Oh, I love that one. Yeah, yeah. I don't and the, when the mask comes off, you see that his face isn't scarred. Ain't nobody just watching Hulk for tiny anxiety. Tiny little scar on it, but for Doom, such understandable. But once again, this is She-Hulk. This is not Hulk. This is She-Hulk. And be honest, even as a Hulk, women still it, the, the whole no, and not, not even that. Like Hulk is based off of emotions. That's how most Hulks get their power. It's based off of emotions. Whether if it's anger, right? Sadness with the other Hulk, you know what I'm saying? Depression, whatever. So her trying to like, you know, trying to take control of her Hulk powers It's kind of the whole point of the show. Because that's most that's how most Hulks channel their power. Through their emotions. So I see nothing wrong with that. I don't. I don't. I don't see what, what's the problem there. So it made it feel. You said I feel like Hulk set the bar so fucking high that She Hulk was okay. So it made it feel ten times worse. What bar though? Like what bar are you? What bar are you? What bar are you measuring this from? The movies, or? Or uh, Mark Ruffalo's character in the MCU, because I would argue Mark Ruffalo's character in the MCU, and I love Mark Ruffalo, wasn't that too much far off from She-Hulk once he got control of his Hulk powers. Like what bar? What bar? What bar? What bar do are we talking about? And Hulk, Hulk barely had any, any, any real scenes before before that. Like if She-Hulk has more screen time than the actual Hulk does. And Hulk has been in four, four or five movies, minus the his own two standalone movies. So what bar are we talking about? Are we talking about the comic books? If you're talking about the comic books, then sure, I guess you can, 
argue that because you know like obviously hulk as a character has such a high ceiling because he's a very lovable character but this is a story about she hulk like we set an ex- 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 expectation for a hulk being everywhere bashing everything but that's not she hulk though she's literally half a hulk that was the whole point she hulk and hulk are two different characters if anything, I don't. I didn't want her to be out here unga boonga smashing shit, cause that wouldn't even make any sense. Cause she only, she's literally, she's literally half of Hulk, so she has half the power. That means half the, half the everything. And her being a being emotional would make more sense for her character. That wouldn't even make any sense. She Hulk wasn't bad. It was just uh, different from that. No, if you think of it as bad, then it's all cause you're not. You're not wrong on that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people have that same sentiment. I'm just asking, like, like what, what actually made it bad for real? You know what I'm saying? And if you think it was bad, then shit, fuck it, nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying the show was great. I'm not saying it's a 10 out of 10 show. It definitely still was a bad show. I'm not even disagreeing with you on that. But, like, why was it a bad show is what I'm asking. You know what I'm saying? From what you, because what expectations are you talking about? What expectations are you, are you driving this from? You know what I'm saying? I think her, I think the person who played as She-Hulk did a good job. I think she just got hold by the writing. I if any if you would have said the writing was bad, I agree with you 100%. I would agree with you 1000%. The writing for She-Hulk was bad, but I think her as her as what they were trying to do with the character, I don't think it was bad. Cuz I don't want She-Hulk to be basically just woman version of Hulk. I want her to be her own version of Hulk. Like her, you know what I'm saying? That's what I want. Honestly, poorly met Expe- uh, expectations of terrible character development and intro. Damn. Okay, well, if that's the case, then sure, ain't nobody disagree with you on that. The writing, the writing for the show itself was bad, but I don't think her, like, her actual, like, what they were trying to go for the character oh, was bad. I don't think so. I don't think what I think what they were trying to do with it, what they was trying to do with the character, I don't think was actually bad. Like, like how they were trying to develop it. I think just the writers just didn't know how to convey that. Don niggas are gay. If I'm gonna be honest. Such an imperfection means he has to hide, hide his face forever. Mm-hmm. Anyways, you're right. He shares a lot of traits with Tony Stark, and I yes. think the only way this works is if he's a Tony Stark variant. Because if you're going to tell me that, like, mm-hmm. Howard Stark's ancestors became Romani travelers and he grew up in... The, but then I'm, I'm like, okay, so that's cool for the MCU. And it really... Because my thing is this, right? They are... Man, I, I know I keep on pausing. But my thing is this, right? If they... If She-Hulk was, like, written by people who actually, like... Okay, I'm trying to think. We did a good job with the characters. If She Hulk was written like by somebody who did like the niggas who did Batman beginning or like like Sam Rainey in the Spider Man shit, if they was written like by people like that, then we would be having a whole different argument. I think the people who wrote the the story the story the people who storyboarded She Hulk just didn't know what they wanted to do with this with the show. Honestly, I don't even think She-Hulk should have even been a show. I think She-Hulk should have been a movie. I think She-Hulk should have just been a movie. I don't I don't think it warranted to be a show. If anything, I don't think any Marvel superhero should have like a show dedicated to them. Cuz like if I'm gonna be honest, cuz if I'm gonna be honest, niggas say She-Hulk was bad, but like if you watch Miss Marvel, Miss Marvel was literally horrible. Miss Marvel was horrible. Miss Marvel was horrible. I enjoyed She-Hulk way more than I did Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel was actually bad. It was actually bad. And they dropped the ball on that. <laughs> Maybe because people don't like Mar- like the Marvel like characters, but like or the like the Miss Marvel characters. But like, damn. Moon Knight was pretty good. Moon Knight was pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Moon Knight was pretty good. Uh it still kind of dropped the ball though. Like I think it was still kind of like I think the only bad thing about Moon Knight for me was like not necessarily pacing, but I feel like it definitely felt like boring at times. Moon Knight definitely had a lot of like boring periods. 
I think with 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 She Hulk, I think it just had a lot of random moments. It was kind of like schizophrenic writing, if it makes any sense. Like it was schizophrenic writing, which I don't know what they were trying to go for with that. Like I don't know what they were trying to go with that. There was there was schizophrenic writing, like because you know I will like I will lie, I will not agree. Like she was like battling her Hulk instincts, and then you'll get comedy gags out of nowhere. And then it gets serious, but then it's like she's not serious, and it's like like there was no like you know what I mean like it wasn't it was all over the place. Moon Knight towards the middle got hella slow. It really did. I'm gonna be honest with you. It really did. I think what what they excelled at most was the was the scenes, the fight scenes, if anything, and the like the like the choreograph choreo 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 choreography. But they picked themselves up at the end. It got 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 man excited mad exciting i thought it was cool because i don't even remember what happened at the end other than uh all i remember them doing in moon knight was like uh the big skeleton nigga was fighting uh the other nigga or some shit i don't even remember i don't even remember bro i ain't gonna lie to you that the i'm not even gonna act like i do re- i do remember they're no longer trying to adapt comic books because sometimes when they do adapt any of y'all watch game of thrones because what the fuck out uh, and i think you make a good point uh, one of the key differences between this variant and the tony we know could be that this i'm gonna be honest i've never seen game of thrones i know go ahead and kill me go ahead and kill me i know i've never seen game of thrones it's one of those tv shows i know people keep on telling me I have not. I don't do that WC. 